Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the equivalent circuit of a transformer. Okay. So, what is the purpose of an equivalent circuit and what does it mean? So, equivalent circuit of a transformer is a compact and efficient means of describing that how well the transformer is working. The knowledge about the equivalent circuit is very important because it helps in estimating and checking the performance parameters of a transformer under all load conditions that is from no load to the full load and it includes the short circuited conditions also. Okay? So the parameters or the performance parameters means it tells us about the voltage regulation of a transformer as well as the efficiency of a transformer. So it helps and it matches the requirements or the industrial requirements of a transformer. Now, the equivalent circuit of a transformer also tells us about the percentage impedance. What is the value of percentage impedance? That is percentage Z of a transformer. Because when we install a transformer in the existing power system, so the matching of percentage impedance value with the other transformers with our, which are already in operation, that is they are connected in parallel. So the matching of percentage Z with the other transformer is also very important. That is why the equivalent circuit of a transformer is, an, is a very important topic if you are going to be a design or a construction engineer in electrical industry. Okay. So let's study about this. See in this circuit diagram, it shows a basic magnetically coupled circuit. Now we have seen in previous video that in a practical transformer, the winding parameters are also present. The winding parameters are winding resistance and leakage reactance. So there are two windings, primary and secondary. So the winding parameters, that is the resistance, so for primary winding, it is represented by R1 and for the secondary winding, it is re represented by R2. So the resistances are present in the windings which are made up of copper and it the resistance or it is shown by the heating of the winding. Okay, The copper losses appears by the heating of the winding. Now next is the leakage reactance which is represented by XL. 1 for the primary side and 2 for the secondary side. So the, the parameters, two main parameters are R1 and XL1 for the primary side and R2, XL2 for the secondary side. Now combining these two, we will get Z1, the primary impedance and Z2 as a secondary impedance. Okay. Now other parameters are supply voltage and the voltage across the load V2. Supply voltage V1 and V2. The load is represented by ZL, the load impedance. Okay, so impedance the load can be changed. Now conditions may be zero, uh, no load condition to the full load condition, or any type of load, whether it is a resistive load, or inductive load, or a capacitive load. Okay. Now see there is one branch. This is called as no load branch. No load branch. It is connected in parallel to the supply and the no load current I0 flows in it. So there is a core loss component and magnetizing component. Now these all are the parameters of the uh, equivalent circuit. Okay, E1 and E2 are the EMF induced in the primary and secondary winding. Now to make the calculations simpler and easier, and to calculate the value of efficiency and voltage regulation, for simplicity, what we are going to do? We are going to shift this parallel branch in front of R1. Okay. Now, when you shift this branch in front of R1, so these resistances and reactances will be in series. Now, in series, how they is, these are going to be? So, you have to transfer the whole circuit to the other side you can do you can transfer the secondary circuit to the primary side or the primary side to the secondary side any way you can do now how
how it is going to make the calculations easier now when you transfer all the parameters to other side then we are going to work in one winding only okay transformer has two windings so we have to work on two windings so that will be very complex okay so when you transfer the parameters to one winding so now we are working in one winding only that is more convenient while doing the calculations okay so see in this circuit this for simplicity the parallel no load branch is shifted in front or before r1 and the parameters of the secondary side that is r2 and xl2 are shifted in the primary side so here we are studying the equivalent circuit which is referred to the primary side so the secondary branch parameters are shifted to the primary side now you when you shift r2 so r2 will become r2 dash in primary side and xl2 will become xl2 dash okay r2 dash and xl2 dash now what will be the value of r2 dash and xl2 dash that we have to find out now the necessary condition which has to be satisfied when you transfer r2 and xl2 is let's talk about first r2 so r2 will become r2 dash so when you transfer r2 so the copper loss which were taking place in the secondary side when i2 current was flowing in the secondary side so the same amount of copper loss should be in the primary side so the copper loss should be maintained constant when the resistance we are transferring either to the primary side or to the secondary side now here we are we are studying about the primary side parameters only okay so copper loss produced by r2 in secondary must be same as the copper loss produced in the primary side when i1 current is flowing in r2 dash understood this so copper loss is i square r so when you do the formula you will get i2 square r2 is equals to i1 square r2 dash now transferring it what we want r2 dash so r2 dash is equals to i2 upon i1 the whole square into r2 now what is this i2 by i1 we know about the transformation ratio transformation ratio k is equals to i1 upon i2 when we talk about the current so here it is i2 by i1 so it will be 1 by k okay so r2 dash is equals to r2 divided by k square so this is the value of resistance when it is referred to the primary side or you can say when it is transferred to the primary side okay now let's talk about the reactance so when we transfer reactance to the primary side it will become xl2 dash okay so what is the necessary condition while transferring the reactance the per unit reactance drop should be maintained constant so what is per unit reactance drop it is ix by e okay so i2 xl2 divided by e2 should be equals to i1 xl2 dash divided by e1 okay now cross multiplying getting the value of xl2 dash so xl2 dash will be xl2 divided by k square okay so i2 by i1 is here and e1 by e2 is here so what is the transformation ratio transformation ratio is equals to i1 upon i2 and it is equals to e2 upon e1 now here it is opposite so it will be 1 by k into 1 by k so k square okay so xl2 dash is equals to xl2 divided by k square now what will be the total resistance referred to the primary side so total resistance is r01 that is equivalent resistance referred to the primary side is r01 is equals to r1 plus r2 dash now see in this circuit diagram r1 and r2 dash are connected in series and xl1 and xl2 dash are also connected in series so they will add up okay so r01 is equals to r1 plus r2 
dash. So what is R2 dash? It is R2 by K square. So it is R01 is equals to R1 plus R2 by K square. All right. Now what is the value of equivalent reactants? It is X01 is equals to XL1 that is primary reactants plus transferred reactants that is XL2 dash. Now substituting the value. XL2 dash is XL2 divided by K square. So total reactants is X01 is equals to XL1 plus XL2 dash divided by K square. Okay. Now the total impedance which is referred to the primary side is represented by Z01 which is equals to R01 plus JX01. Okay. Now we have to find the magnitude. How we are going to do that? So Z01 is equals to root over R01 square plus X01 square. Okay. When you do the calculations, all the resistance and reactances will be given in the question. Just take the uh, parameters referred to either side, whether primary or secondary, and calculate the value of total impedance Z01. Okay. Now we are getting these formulas. Parameters refer to the primary side. Let's take a revision. R01 is equals to R1 plus R2 divided by K square. X01 is equals to XL1 plus XL2 by K square. And Z01 is equals to R01 plus JX01. So this is the approximate equivalent circuit. Now see, at the end we have to draw the equivalent circuit also. So V1 is the supply voltage. No load branch will be same. I2 dash. This is the secondary current which is transferred to the primary side. So I2 will become I2 dash. Okay. R01 equivalent resistance. X01 is the equivalent reactance. Z01 is the equivalent impedance. Now the load ZL will become ZL dash and the terminal voltage V2 will become V2 dash. Now what will be the values of these other parameters V2 dash, I2 dash, ZL dash. Let's see. So V2 dash will be V2 by K square. E2 dash will be E2 by K square and I2 dash will be K times I2. Okay. Now ZL dash will be root over RL dash square plus XL dash square. This is the load impedance. So where RL dash is equals to RL divided by K square and XL dash is XL by K square. And ZL dash will be ZL by K square. Okay, now K is equals to N2 by N1, which is also equals to I1 upon I2, and this is also equals to E2 upon E1. Okay, hope you understood all about the equivalent circuit of a transformer. Thanks for watching.